Well, despite a challenging year, Spear Reed has reported an annual revenue increase of 5.9%. This growth coupled with consistent cash flows has allowed uh, its board to approve a 95% payout ratio. Consequently, a total distribution of 78.8 cents per share has been declared. And joining me now to unpack the performance in greater detail is CEO Quinton Rossi. Thank you so much for your time, Quinton. Uh, just to start off the conversation, just talk to me about the level of growth that you saw during this period. Thanks, Inati, and uh, thanks for having me. I think the period was um, it was a bit of subdued growth, to be honest, because we are in a high interest rate environment mm -hmm. and we have been battling, you know, the operating cost creep conundrum uh, as things are getting more expensive. Uh, but we've been maniacally focused on driving our in-force escalations across the diversified portfolio to get us to uh, higher top line revenue. And we've been managing our expenses acutely to try and get that net operating income number as high as possible. And I think favorably for us, there's been a big shift in demand for real estate within the Western Cape, not just in the residential space, but across the commercial, industrial and retail space, which has given us a bit of a, a, a leg up, if I can call it that, uh, compared to the rest of Africa. And given the fact that 100% of the portfolio is in the Western Cape, uh, we believe that that has driven higher occupancy rates, better top line revenue numbers, and inadvertently resulted in that 3.80% growth in our distribution per share. Yeah, when actually talking about the headwinds that we are experiencing uh, there, and you talk about that uh, operating cost creep, what exactly is it um, that are the biggest uh, drivers there? But also, how are your tenants faring amid all of that? Yeah, so, you know, a consequence of a growing metro and a, and a municipality that invests heavily into infrastructure, the rates and taxes increases in the city of Cape Town were quite uh, sizable. Uh, we recover approximately 63% of the total rates bill that we get billed across our portfolio uh, from our tenants. And what we typically do is we try and curate a total cost of occupancy proposal to our tenants. Uh, which seems to be the the way to do it in terms of tenants being able to cover those costs. Mm -hmm. However, there is that typical leakage because you can't recover the full rates um, account in certain instances. Yeah. However, as we've grown our industrial portfolio, we managed to uh, increase those recoveries because of triple net uh, leases. But big drivers for operating cost creep have been things like diesel costs, uh, the cost of insurance, just given uh, the residual impact of uh, civil unrest. Uh, Sashria being cleaned out post the civil unrest has resulted in the recapitalization requirement from Sashria. So you're now paying more for less cover. Mm. And then just generally uh, with inflation, uh, things have gotten more expensive. So your service level agreements with your lift service contractors, security, cleaning, landscaping, those have gotten more expensive. And what we've managed to do and to neutralize some of that cost creep has effectively been a, um, a, a in-force escalation rate yeah. that has benefited us uh, quite materially at around seven and a half percent. Yeah. I mean, just uh, talking about the operating environment, uh, do you find that um, that maybe leaks itself into or not into your kind of rental reversions uh, picture? Uh, quite right. I think the um, the rental reversions typically uh, would probably have been slightly stronger in the office environment if mm. the general SA macro uh, was not as depressed as one can say uh, at this moment in time. Just given the effect that um, we we would want to see more international companies setting up offices um, in Cape Town, and you can already see it. Uh, and and if you just had to kind of zoom out and yeah. have that same nuance across South Africa, where there's policy certainty and good governance, uh, we would certainly see that those rising tides would lift all ships mm. and not just benefit the retail and industrial sector. Yeah, Quentin, let's talk about uh, capital uh, recycling. There, you say that you continue uh, to evaluate um, your portfolio of assets on an ongoing basis so that it can meet your long-term investment criteria. Just give us a rundown of some of the key factors behind that uh, long-term investment criteria. So from a sphere perspective, we want to build a meaningful mid-cap, 100% Western Cape focused REIT. 
which is anchored by a high quality industrial portfolio and a high quality convenience and destination retail uh, portfolio with exposure to multi-tenanted offices, data centers, medical facilities, et cetera. Mm. In the long term, as we evaluate the current portfolio, we look for assets that we believe have fulfilled their life cycle within our portfolio in the sense where we feel that we've unlocked sufficient shareholder value and they are then ripe for disposal and okay. we would then aggregate those funds uh, to reinvest into larger assets in line with that strategic objective that I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we've done in the disposal of smaller assets over the years. Even with the Liberty Life transaction, it wasn't the small disposal, but it was very strategic. We had exposure to single tenant risk and we dispose of that asset and part of the proceeds from that disposal together with our equity capital raise we did in February will fund the new EMIRA transaction we announced to the market in the beginning of April. Ah, all right. And just lastly, as we wrap up the conversation, of course, we're talking about what to uh, look forward to, Quinton. What does your uh, acquisition uh, growth runway look like in the short to medium term? So for us, it's a very strategic growth objective. Uh, we have a 1.146 billion Rand portfolio that will be transferring into the Spear portfolio by the end of this year, mm -hmm. which will increase our portfolio value to 5.4 billion across 502,000 square meters. Our intent is to stabilize that portfolio onto our asset management platform and then look again at what's a, what is out there in the market that we feel ticks the boxes from our value investment uh, perspective and then grow the portfolio in the industrial and retail um, segment of the market together with some potential data center opportunities as they present themselves. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and detailing those numbers for us and also the prospects uh, for uh, Spear REIT in the short to medium term. Really appreciate the time, Quinton. Uh, that was Spear REIT CEO Quinton Rossi.